Sometimes there's nothing like being able to put a hated, waste of space idiot of a companion out of your misery permanently. At least that's what we think on this channel, but not everyone feels that way. In fact, I don't think it's going too far to say that killing companions is one of the most contentious subjects among Sordor players, with some vehemently against the whole idea of killing companions ever at all, while others clamor for even more opportunities to waste their least favorite character. But that just means it's a topic that's right up our alley. So let's dive into those perilous waters and talk about why being able to kill companions or otherwise boot them from your game is a good thing. And beware spoilers for companions who can die. Yes, you heard me right. Having the option to kill companions is a good thing because first and foremost, it allows the player to play their character how they see fit. In other words, player agency. I think most of us would agree that we'd like our companion characters to be more than window dressing. We'd like them to have meaningful roles in the story. And in good stories, that will inevitably lead to some of those companions disagreeing with our characters. In fact, they might disagree so much that they take actions that directly impede our characters' goals. And that's a good thing, because this creates conflict, and we all know that a good story needs conflict. After all, things get pretty boring if you're all just sitting around agreeing with each other all the time. But for this conflict to work as it's supposed to, and for it to be fun, it has to be a two-way street. Our characters need to be able to respond in ways that are both in keeping with their personalities and the severity of the companion's offense, which might just mean being able to argue back. But in the case of more serious infractions like insubordination or betrayal, like the companion trying to kill them, our characters need to be able to take more drastic measures if that's what they would do. Otherwise, you end up with situations like we have with Quinn, who tries to kill the warrior at the behest of their mortal enemy, or Kaleo, who sells classified imperial information to her buddies while on the agent's ship. Those are some pretty serious crimes, for which death is not an unreasonable punishment, especially for a Sith or a loyalist agent. Except, of course, it's not an option. You can't even boot him off your ship. You can choke Quinn and throw him against a bulkhead, but then it's back to business as usual. With Kaleo, it's even worse. You can't really do anything to her at all except shake your finger in her face and tell her you'll get her next time. We're forced to overlook their behavior and tolerate their continued presence, even if it doesn't make sense for our characters to do so. And I think this is at least part of the reason these are a couple of the most hated characters in the game. But at least there was a good reason for making these characters unkillable. When the game launched, companions could only have one role, and of course there weren't any cartel companions to make up for it. So if you killed your healer, well, you were out of luck. So Bioware compromised by not allowing the player to kill them, even though being able to kill them was in the original design. Nowadays, though, we have a ton of companions and they can all fill all the roles, so that's not a concern. And in recent years, the writers have allowed us to kill many companions, including Quinn and Kaleo. And I think the story's better off for it, because my characters can stay in character. But having the kill option doesn't just benefit our characters. It also allows the companion characters to take more drastic actions in pursuit of their goals and desires. Without the kill option, the only way to get around the situation like we had in the base game with Quinn and Kaleo is to make companions completely agreeable, so that they'll never do anything to run afoul of the player. Which means we end up with the opposite problem. Instead of our characters having to put up with bad behavior from the companion, now the companion has to tolerate the PC's behavior without complaint. To see an example of this, all you have to do is look at Theron. He's already had a kill option, so maybe the writers just don't want to put him in that position again, but in any case, he will stick with the PC no matter what. Now, sure, he'll throw a little hissy fit if you bomb civilians on Corellia, but after that, he's back to being one of your top advisors, and that seems pretty out of character for him. But if he challenges the PC in any meaningful way, the writers will have to allow the player to respond appropriately, or risk turning Theron into another Quinn. So yeah, when appropriate, the kill or exile option is a good thing. It frees up the writer. They can have the companion tick off the player, but the player has an appropriate response when that happens, which makes for better stories. At least it does when the kill or exile option is handled well. And while I think it mostly has been, I'll admit it isn't always the case. I'm specifically talking about the vet Torian choice in Chapter 8 of Knights of the Eternal Throne. I think this is pretty close to universally hated, and for good reason. I did an entire video on why I don't think that choice works in Chapter 8, so I won't go into detail about that here. Suffice to say, it feels like, to me at least, that it was just shoved in there to give us a choice that matters in a chapter that is otherwise memorable only for more walker combat and being tossed off the ledge during the Valen fight. The whole deal where you can only save one just isn't set up very well, it doesn't seem to make any sense, you should be able to try at least to save both of them and you can't. Ultimately, you just end up pointlessly losing a companion. So no, killing off companions isn't always done well. 
but that doesn't mean it should never be an option, especially if it's the player's choice to kill or spare the companion. Now, like I said, this is a contentious topic, so that means that there are plenty of folks out there who vehemently disagree with me on this point. Everybody has their reasons, of course, but one of the most common arguments I see against having a kill option for companions is that once they're killable, they might as well be dead for everyone. Because even if you keep them alive, you'll never get to see them in cutscenes anymore, you'll never get to flirt with them anymore, they'll never speak again, they're ultimately just stronghold decorations. The argument goes that because of limited resources, whether that's time or money, the devs are unwilling or unable to give us meaningful content for characters who won't be alive for everyone. Because that content won't be seen by everyone, therefore it's a waste of those limited resources to make it. And a few years ago this was probably the case, but not so much anymore, as there are quite a few might-be-dead companions who continue to get content. The most notable example of this is Theron. If you did didn't leave him to die on Nathema or kick him out of your alliance, and even sometimes if you did, he'll still continue to be a fixture in most briefing scenes, he can accompany you on some missions, and if you romanced him, you'll still be able to flirt with him. The only companion who gets more screen time than he does is Lana, and while this might not satisfy everybody, he still gets more time than most companions whether you can kill them or not. But Theron's not the only killable companion who still gets screen time. Torian has shown up quite a bit in the Mandalorian arc. Arkin had a nice sized chunk of content in the recent Old Wounds update, but he also made appearances in Echoes of Oblivion and at the end of the Nathema arc, and Koth gets some brief screen time in Hearts and Minds. Admittedly, this might not be as much time as people would like with these characters, and certainly not all killable companions have shown up again after getting the kill option, but I think what we've seen in recent updates with characters like Torian and Arkin is an encouraging sign, because it shows that the writers are willing to write content that not everyone will see. So if Broadsword is willing to give them the freedom and resources they need, I think it's entirely possible that we could see characters like Vet and Koth make an appearance again if the story warrants it. Another reason I've seen people give for not liking the ability to kill companions is that being able to kill companions is the reason we get Lana all the time. Again, because of limited resources, the writers have to use Lana because she's the only companion guaranteed to be alive for everyone. And it's true, we do get a lot of Lana in place of characters who might be more appropriate, and it certainly could be a cost-cutting measure, but it's demonstrated demonstrably not because she's the only companion guaranteed to be alive. Now, I say this for a couple of reasons. First, like we just talked about, killable companions do get screen time now. And second, Lana replaces companions who are definitely not killable and who are absolutely available to everyone. The most egregious example of this is at the end of Echoes of Oblivion, when our characters wake up to Lana, even if she wasn't on the mission. Meanwhile, Kira and Scourge, the two characters who started that mission in the first place and who are both alive and available to everybody are just gone. The same thing happens earlier on Iacath when your character wakes up to Lana's face yet again. Even if you've romanced Theron, Elara, or Quinn, all of whom are very much alive with no kill option and on Iacath. Heck, Theron's in the same room, but it doesn't matter. You still get Lana. It's just Lana, Lana all the time. We can speculate all day about why that might be, but it's not because we have killable companions, because Lana replaces everybody, killable or not. So there you have it, some of my thoughts on why killing companions is a good thing. Essentially, I'll usually always come down on more player choice, more ways to roleplay your character as you see fit, because sometimes you want to forgive and forget, but you know, sometimes you don't. And in recent updates, people who do kill companions have been able to do so without making those companions completely worthless for the ones who don't. And I can't see any reason that trend won't continue if the devs are still able to make meaningful story content under Broadsword. But drop a line in the comments and let us know what you think. Like and subscribe and all that jazz, and as usual, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.